Enough people have already told you that it's not about what you get. It's about who you become. Virtue are the true jewels of this life. Not stuff. Not that fancy watch with the diamonds in it, iced out, dripping. Right? That's not, that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't satisfy the soul. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I know the new age law of attraction works, but can easily lead to the wrong path such as, such as uh, self-worship. I recently watched your video on meditation and you told us to say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. My question is, I know this technique works, but how can I use this to help me manifest a better life in all areas such as spiritual and finance? Very good question. And so when you talk about the new age leading to self-worship, uh, you're right in that it's all about what I can get. Me, me, me. I want a new car. I want a big house. I want to manifest the right spouse in my life, right? It's all about the things that you want where when we live from that place, everything in life rides and falls on our emotions and how we're feeling. And if we're getting what we want in that moment from, you know, this is what the atheists say, but this is kind of a way people treat it. The Santa Claus in the sky, right? My big daddy in the sky, my sugar daddy in the sky, what are you gonna give me if I say it long enough or if I think about it hard enough? I put up enough pictures on my wall about it. Will you give it to me? Because I know there's a law that's associated with that. Your mind is a magnet, right? And so then it becomes not about living the human experience as a microcosm within the macrocosm, a child of God, right? It's, and then, you know, it's interesting because that term child of God, and then you think about the immature way people uh, behave towards God, but it's the image, it's the type of, uh, it's reminiscent of the type of perverted childhood that we all grew up with and that our, you know, that we raise in our children in. And, uh, and once again, it's selfish. It's about selfishness. In the Old Testament, you know, when you read the Ten Commandments, I think it's, I don't know which commandment it is, uh, but you should honor thy mother and father. Honor thy mother and father. One of the first ways to be honorable, or honor your mother and father is what? Gratitude. Gratitude. Thanks. Thanks for what you do have. And a lot of these people that use uh, New Age Law of Attraction, if they don't do it right, because it, it does work. You're right. It does. Uh, but it won't work for somebody who doesn't have gratitude. Isn't that interesting? It won't work for somebody who doesn't appreciate what they have because God can't add more to you. You haven't filled up your space enough to be abundant. You wait, you're sitting in that half, em half empty glass wondering why it's not spilling over with wealth because you didn't do the best that you could do with what you got right now. And that's a principle. That's a, that's a spiritual principle. It's a new age principle. It's a biblical principle to be grateful that fills you up. And when you're grateful, you don't scorn the things around you and you treat them better. So God can trust you with more. Now, you go on to ask me about a video I made about a particular Eastern Christian meditation, which comes from the Orthodox tradition. It's an old prayer. In fact, it's the first prayer. After the Lord's Prayer, the oldest prayer is the prayer of the heart. It's called the prayer of the heart is what the Orthodox call it. And so we take a totally different approach when when dealing with spirit, dealing with, you know, even what you think you want in life, when we treat, we, we put ourselves in a humble place, and not a grandiose place, but in a, in a place of humility. And I'll talk about the benefits of both. I already spoke about the benefits of one, but this one here goes a lot deeper because most of what people want to manifest is material. And what we do know is that material wealth doesn't really offer 
true happiness, true joy. That stuff can be taken away. I can tell you from my experience, I'm no happier as a wealthy man than I was when I was broke. I have more stuff, I have more responsibilities, right? But the ever elusive dangling carrot of happiness, right? Which the world tells us that's what we should be thriving for. Enough people have already told you that it's not about what you get. It's about who you become. Virtue are the true jewels of this life. Not stuff, not that fancy watch with the diamonds in it, iced out, dripping. Right? That's not, that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't satisfy the soul. Satisfies, satisfies the soul is virtue. And humility is a powerful, powerful, probably the most powerful virtue. And I'll tell you why in a moment, but just look at the word. Humility. The, the, the prefix hue is where human comes from. It's human to be human, to, to, to have humility. Because it puts us back into the right order of things, like the child and the father. Have humility. Respect. But anyway, so when we approach our spiritual life from the perspective of what do I want versus who I'm becoming, uh, or by recognizing the contrast between the two, we could see how the second approach, what I'm going to share with you now, is more conducive of gifts for the soul. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's how the whole, whole prayer goes. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. First, I'm recognizing that I am not Lord. I am not God. The world doesn't revolve around me. Robert Moore speaks in his, uh, in his amazing books, all of his books, uh, and lectures about, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a neo-Jungian. And one of the concepts that, Jungian, that Carl Jung got right was that if we, we have to take the center of our focus outside of ourselves to truly become kings. If the center of focus is, is only on ourselves, uh, then we lose. We lose ultimately because the world and everybody else around and my connection to the divine is lost because I'm God and I'm important and it's all about what I want. So number one, I'm not God. Have mercy on me and it continues, a sinner. This is a reminder. This is a reminder which brings us back, puts us back into place. Humility is about knowing your right place. That I am not perfect. That I still struggle. I've spoken to you guys about that earlier. I still struggle. And I'm not talking about struggling with the world. I'm talking about I'm still struggling inside. I'm still fighting off different effeminate ideals within me, different emotional battles, different addictions, different disorders, different retardation, our stunted growth. We're all struggling. Every single one of us is struggling. We were talking the other day about, you know, perfect parents that don't exist and that everybody screws up their kids. Everybody, every single one of us have had trauma. Everybody had trauma. You can't escape it. It's a part of life and it always has been and it always will be. Thus, you can't make perfect decisions because you and I don't have perfect insight. We don't have perfect sight. Right? And so this prayer of the heart is given as a mantra. It's given as something that's just repeated over and over and over again. There's a great book called The, uh, the Pilgrim. It's a Russian, it's a, it's a old Russian story about a boy who goes throughout these villages and just, he's walking through the mountains of Russia, whatever it is. And he meets different gurus, different teachers, different saints that teach him how to cultivate the, the virtue of the soul through the repetition of this prayer, this mantra, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. My question is, this is, this is our friend's question. My question is, I know this technique works, but how can I use it to help me manifest a better life in all areas such as spiritual and finance? So now we spoke about the two, the, just the two different perspectives. Not one, not, one's not right, one's not wrong. I'm in this 
conversation. Talk about the attributes of both. What I want, gimme, gimme, gimme. And humility, I am not perfect. I'm trying my best, right? The ascender and the descender, right? And so your, your question, you're asking me, basically, how can I, how can I, how can I use this descending technique, this humbling technique, to inflate and infatuate myself, <laughs> right? It's, I had to spell all that out just to show you that they're incompatible. The two perspectives are incompatible. The prayer of the heart is not about manifesting a better life, even when you say spiritual and finance, right? Because it's just a side rant that finance is a spiritual thing. Because to the degree that you can cultivate virtue, to the degree that you can purge yourself of effeminacy and weakness and anger, all these things, to the degree that we can purge ourselves of those, all those impurities through mortification and penance and prayer and humility, the more you're, o you're an open channel for manifestation. You don't have as many hang-ups. You're more pure. And so your desires are more pure, meaning they're more in line with God. And so you're going to have finance to the degree that you need finance in order to do God's work on this planet. It won't, be, it won't be disordered greed, finance so I can have waste for the most part, right? And, you know, I share this stuff with you guys because not out of somebody who's got it all figured out, but someone, someone who's kind of seen, I've seen this in myself. I've been wrestling with these battles. Everything I talk about in these videos is about me wrestling with this. I'm wrestling, you're wrestling. I'm a little bit older. and I got a little bit tighter grip. So I just impart a little bit of what I've discovered, but uh, I'm not perfect. So you got to ask yourself, this is, this is Jesus. This is one of Jesus' quotes. He says, you, can't, you cannot worship God the Father and mammon. I love that, mammon. Mammon's like a demon. And I love the way that it's called mammon because it sounds like mammary, mammary glands, mammary glands, mammon, like titty, like sucky sucky, like mommy mommy, material comfort, pleasure. Effeminacy, mammon, mama. You can't worship mama and God the Father, right? You can't worship your infatuation with inflation, flossing, essentially, right? And material comfort. Uh, and rise up in virtue. In fact, most virtue... Most virtue does not, does not come easily. Most virtue comes from getting your ass whooped. See, I'm, only, I'm a little bit more humble than I used to be. <laughs> I'm still an arrogant dude, but I'm a little bit more humble because why? God beat the crap out of me. I tore both biceps, tore my Achilles tendon because humility is a virtue that old Uncle E is getting worked on through, needs to work on, is working on, right? So there's got to be a struggle. There's got to be a battle. If you want to push up that bench press you got to fight with that weight and so every so the, the the wealth of virtue requires the same kind of work maybe worse because it's soul work than try to make the almighty dollar so uh to answer your question they don't work this you're you're doing two different things you're wanting two different things and when I look at it, when I think about it, the two different things you want can be achieved, but they need to be rightly ordered. If you want in the finance, but not the humility, not the virtue, you wanting the stuff, but you don't want to become the kind of person, it's like you're trying to put on a bow tie, like, man, those bow ties look dope. I want to get me a bow tie, a real nice bow tie, but you're not wearing the tuxedo. You're buck naked. The foundation ain't right, right? But you got on the bow tie, look at me. This is what the people that like win the lottery, this is what happens to them. The state lottery, they give it to some redneck that never had no money and they come to him in his old broke down house and they say, here's the biggest, beautiful bow tie you could ever have, man, still naked. And they put this big bow tie on him and guess what? He don't know what the fuck to do with that bow tie. That bow tie is gone, i.e. that money is usually gone. Most people who win the lottery to lose the money because they're not the kind of person 
They didn't deserve it, <laughs> right? So you want to make yourself deserving first. And so I would drop the whole trying to manipulate the manifestation God, right? And work on becoming the kind of man that attracts that kind of stuff. Becoming the kind of man that his life unfolds in the most natural and vi vital and beautiful and gracious way possible with all the finance that he needs when he needs the finance and none of the finance when he doesn't need it. With the struggle when he's supposed to have it and the triumph when he deserves it. And that means humbling yourself. It means putting yourself, putting yourself in alignment, putting yourself under the mantle of God the Father Almighty, of heaven and earth. Right? So that's my opinion on that. Go for the virtue. Go for the soul gains. And the material gains, they're going to come. They're going to come. Because when you're so lined up that you're doing what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to have is just going to be attracted to you. That's the real law of attraction. Not needing, right? Not wanting. Not grabbing. Not reaching. But allowing. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. And we talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.